Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Jamal Mubarak, hopefully everybody's having a good day. Um, I guess I can get started now, inshallah khair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'khbiruhu wa na'uzu billah min shiruri anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahadiyala. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la shirikala anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم من يتي الله ورسوله my dear brothers and sisters, all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, uh, can take away from us in a, in, a way that will, um, that in a way that will not satisfy us. Inshallah khair, may Allah give us all the guidance. May Allah give us all the tawfiq to learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, Allahumma I mean. Um, alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm so fortunate to have this opportunity once again to speak with you, to talk to you and share with you some of the thoughts that I've been kind of noodling on about uh, the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and I don't take this privilege lightly. I mean, this is something that I, I feel very blessed about. So inshallah, khair, hopefully you will walk away today feeling like you learned something and inshallah, uh, hopefully you can use this also in your day-to-day -day, uh, day day lives. You know, with any names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should always try and get closer. That is the goal, get closer to our creator. Um, sometimes, you know, all we can do is just make the intention, you know, to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is all we can muster for that one day. And that's okay. You know, as long as we keep the intention, we keep it uh, small, we keep it strong and manageable, then inshallah khair will get better and better with it every single day. And if we continue to struggle for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is better for us. Uh, so think of it like a seed, you know, you plant that seed, you let that tree, that seed thrive, you know, giving it um, the environment to thrive in, the nourishment that it needs, so that this way it can establish itself into the ground. And over time, you know, it will grow and become this strong uh, plant, strong tree. And sometimes the environment is harsh, sometimes it's not comfortable, uh, but with enough love and care and attention, you know, a seed can grow. And that's kind of like, you know, us making habits. You know, we make the intention to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single day we're trying to get closer and closer and making sure that that becomes habit so it sticks with us. So giving our love and care and our love and care towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just because it's another day. You know, we are, we are here, alhamdulillah, all of us uh, gathered here today. Uh, you know, Jum'ah is one of those special days for us as Muslims. There's an authentic hadith as recorded in Al-Tirmidhi, uh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said that the best day the sun rises upon is Friday. On this day, Adam was created. On it entered paradise. And on it, he was expelled from it. And the hour will be not accept, uh, ex, uh, established except on Friday. And at this moment, we are all receiving the mercy and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have taken our focus away from work, away from about a million other things we could have been doing or thinking about. And here we are seeking the pleasure and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meeting our obligation as Muslims um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us about. And, and, and who, who wouldn't, you know, um, why would we not want to seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we do something, either intentionally or accidentally, that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't go and say, you know what, I don't want the mercy of Allah, I want the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a scary thought. Who would do that? Who would not want to seek the mercy of Allah instead want to seek the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That is not a dua that, that I would want to make or, or anybody else um, ought to make for themselves. Because when we talk about justice, we talk about um, usually justice for somebody else. But even in that situation, you know, let's, let's imagine putting ourselves in that situation. We should be asking for Allah's mercy um, when we think about we want justice for somebody else. Not that justice is, is not desirable or anything like that, but we should also be thinking about the mercy, uh, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Allah is the most merciful, is the most compassionate. We say this 
every single time we open the Quran and we read a chapter, with the exception of one chapter, which is Surah Tawbah, every single chapter in the Quran, we start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you know, in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. So inshallah, khair, you know, you know, if it were not for Iblis, at least this is, this is in my mind, if it were not for Iblis, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him time to show that humankind could be um, deviated from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps Allah wouldn't, um, Allah would have guided every single one of us um, just, you know, by default. And maybe that one incident is the reason why not everybody guided. But, you know, again, just something that um, that crossed my mind as I was thinking about this today. Um, and on that note, you know, I'd like to jump into the two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I wanted to, to talk about today. And these two names are typically paired together. And these are the names of Al-Muqaddim and Al-Muakhir. The meaning of Al-Muqaddim is the promoter. And the meaning of Al-Muakhir is the postponer. So from the name Al-Muqaddim, we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us closer to him and whoever he subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. So we know from the Quran that the angels and the prophets are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the scholars. These are people who have spent their entire lives either memorizing the Quran, learning about the Quran, reflecting on the Quran, and then going out there and spreading this knowledge um, to their communities. And those are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also um, promotes closer to him. Um, and the people also who are closest to Allah are the people who are the best in characters. Um, and how do we know this? How do we know that those people who are best in character are, are also promoted to be close to Allah? In one of the authentic hadith as recorded in Al-Albani and reported by Amr ibn Shoaib's grandfather, Prophet Sallallahu said to his companion, shall I tell you about who is most beloved to me? and the one who will be closest to me on the day of judgment. And the companions were silent. So the Prophet ﷺ repeated his questions two or three more times. And then one of the companions said, yes, O Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell us who that person is. And he said, the one among you with the best of character. Now let's think about that for a minute. Uh, our Prophet beloved Muhammad وسلم, is, is already close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is telling us that to be closest to the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment is to have good character. And just taking that thought forward, being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just being close to the Prophet will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and you know, Allah, Allah has given a special place for Prophet Muhammad. Sallam, and we see this in multiple places also in the Quran. Um, you know, for example, in uh, Surah Al-Azab, verse 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have an excellent example for whoever has hope in Allah and the last day. There's an important principle for us to pick up on in, um, in this particular ayah. Uh, when the Prophet ﷺ was telling about the Day of Judgment to all the companions, you know, Understandably, many of these companions were, were worried. They were afraid that they would be from among those who will be taken to the hellfire. And they were shaken. They were afraid of the day that their deeds will be you know, held to account. And this verse in Surah Al-Azab is one example for us where Allah SWT is emphasizing, follow the way of Muhammad. Follow his example. Follow the way he treated his family, his community, how he dealt with uh, people from different cities, his entire character is an example for us. How he led his life is probably, he's probably one of the most public people you can read about. Every single aspect of his life from when uh, he, before he was a prophet to when after he was uh, given prophethood, all of that is available to us in many, many different books uh, that we can learn from. So if anything, you know, we should tell ourselves, we should course correct ourselves and follow the example of the messengers of Allah so that we can be promoted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a higher status. So by emulating the character of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we will find ourselves in a better place. You know, I, I sometimes wonder about the description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the Quran about Jannah and how the people of paradise are in peace 
and always greet one another with assalamu alaikum and, and just having that sense of sukoon uh, within them. Um, and imagine if everyone in this world created one another like that. Imagine if everyone in this world set aside all of their differences and treated one another with kindness. We might just have a taste of Jannah in this world. Anyhow, just a thought. So the other name of Allah I wanted to cover today is al muakhir the postponer. So the promoter, Al-Muqaddam, and the postponer, al muakhir And Allah knows the best time for everything. You know, we can think of the example of um, Yusuf alayhi salam, Joseph. When Joseph was thrown into prison after being wrongly accused, um, he spent more time in prison than his fellow prison mates. And this is despite the other prisoners saying that Yusuf alayhi salam was better than them, not just in character, but in every single aspect. Um, and, you know, however, Allah delayed his release from prison until an appointed time. And we all know how the story plays out from there. You know, once he was released from prison, he was given um, a very high position in the government. He was made a minister. He was given a position of authority. And also he was united with his family. Another example we find in the Quran is that of Noah or Nuh alayhi salam. When Noah was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to build an ark, you know, he went ahead and did that while everybody else around him was, was mocking him, making fun of him. Even his, even his uh, son didn't uh, climb on the ark when Allah's punishment descended upon his people. And we know from the Quran that um, Nuh alayhi salam spent 950 years, 950 years preaching to his people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know this because it is in Surah Al-Ankabut, verse 14. Um, so Allah tells us the age or how many years uh, Nuh alayhi salam was preaching on this earth. And when the, when the punishment of Allah was decreed, when it descended upon his people, um, nobody believed him until that point. You know? And his son was one of those people who perished in the flood. So this is, this is an example of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala postponing his punishment giving people a chance, in the case of Nuh alayhi salam, a very long expanse of time to say, come back to Allah, repent your sins, connect with me. And sometimes we even see this in our own communities as well, you know, even in this day and age, maybe even in our own selves, there might be times when we desire something to happen sooner rather than later. You know, maybe we're thinking about marriage, maybe we're thinking about children, uh, maybe we're thinking about a business opportunity, there are times when we see other people, for example, get it, getting promoted in the workplace uh, much sooner than we might think they might be ready, or you know, it might make us in return feel like we are less skilled, we are less talented. Um, there might be times when others accumulate more wealth than us in a very short amount of time, and that might make us feel inadequate. Um, there also might be times when we might see other people, you know, take more holiday trips, going around the world, traveling, seeing different countries and cities and places. And that might make us feel like, like we are missing out. And sometimes we might feel a little jealousy in our heart. You know, we might ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to expedite that which is in our hearts, that is that which we desire. And this is not the way that we should be operating. You know, inshallah, we should be operating with, with patience. We should be operating with um, perseverance. You know, these feelings, that we have to try and hurry things through, to try and you know, move in front of the line very quickly. These are all part of being human. These are feelings that come with the package of being just a human being. Uh, and, and it's okay. These are totally acceptable. You know, if we allow these feelings to take us, um, to take us over, then at that point, we would be bringing ourselves closer in alignment with shaitan. And we don't ever want that for ourselves. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of the, the story of Ayyub al-Islam, who stayed firm in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you remember the story of Ayyub, Ayyub al-Islam was one of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who was um, stoic, was firm in the path of Allah, had um, suffered loss of family, loss of children, loss of business, loss of wealth, loss of health. A lot of these things where shaitan was, was uh, you know, as the story goes, testing Ayyub and saying, you know, I'm going to get this. He, you'll see that he's not the grateful servant that you that you think it is. But what does what does Allah tell us in the Quran? Allah tells us about Ayyub al Islam as being one of the most grateful servants of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and a patient servant at that. 
you know, he held firm in his belief and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him um, at the end of that, uh, that uh, experience. And, and we also know this from the Quran in Surah Al-Anbiya, for example, in verses 83 and 84, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and remember when Job, that's Ayyub, cried out to his Lord, I have been touched with adversity and you are the most merciful of the merciful. So we answered his prayer and removed his adversity and gave him back his family twice as many as a mercy from us and a lesson for the devoted worshipers. So in do, these two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we learned that Allah is the best planner of all. When the time is right for something to happen, as decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will happen. And that is part of our, our aqidah, our belief. If you remember the story of Jibreel alayhi salam, when Jibreel came and visited uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. One of the six things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the last of them was, was, um, um, uh, was the belief that Allah, so the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything has been decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So rather than let our anxious nature take over, we should let our patience come forward. We should hurry to do good deeds in this world and just keep doing them because they will help us in the hereafter when we can no longer do any better in this world. And we should remind one another to do good because this will help our character and promote us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so that our patience will be rewarded just like uh, Job's patience or Yub's patience was rewarded. And the stories of the prophets in the Quran are lessons, truly lessons for us to learn from. You know, we can, we, we can look at many of their characteristics and, and try and emulate them, bring ourselves closer to living the life of virtue in this world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate all of our understanding of the Quran so that we may begin to and continue to live our lives under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, may Allah increase us in knowledge and give us wisdom. That is, give us the ability to apply this knowledge when we need it most. My dear brothers and sisters, I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and for the rest of the Muslims. So ask Allah for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the most merciful. My dear brothers and sisters, Sheikh Ibn Atala mentions in his book of wisdoms that it is better to keep company with an ignorant man who is dissatisfied with himself than a learned man who is pleased with himself. In the view of Ibn Atala, you know, if we find ourselves satisfied with ourselves, it is no different than being satisfied with our ego. And we will overlook all of our shortcomings. Um, for what knowledge is there in a self-satisfied scholar? And what ignorance is there in an unlearned man dissatisfied with himself? You know, the source of every disobedience, indifference, and passion is self-satisfaction. The source of every obedience, vigilance, and virtue is dissatisfaction with oneself. And this is not from me, this is from uh, Sheikh Ibn Atayla in his book of wisdoms. Um, inshallah, let us all pray that Allah guides our hearts towards him. Uh, may we all find the strength to stay firm in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah forgive all of our shortcomings. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina kuratayu niya wa jalla al-muttakina imama Rabbana faqfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyiatina wa tuwafana ma'al abrar Rabbi jalli mukim wa salati wa min zuriyati Rabbana wa taqabal dua Rabbana khfirli wa li walidaya wa lil mu'minina yawma yakumu hisab Rabbana la tuzih kulubana ba'da hizadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab Rabbana alayka tawakkalna wa alayka anabna wa alayka al-masir ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا زلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنا كنا من الخاسرين ربنا آمنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الرحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهانها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين آمين اللهم آمين الله قائد الصالحين الله give us the uh, knowledge and wisdom to be better, to be better at least 1% every single day. Ameen, Allahumma, ameen.